Hey, what's up everyone? Joey J. Ping here, checking in live, respectmyregion.com. Coming at you guys live from downtown Los Angeles. We're at the Warner Records office. I got Forrest Claudette here in the building. We got a conversation today. How you living? I'm living very well. I appreciate you being here with me. Of course. You left got handshake. You've got a, yeah, we can do left handshake. We, you got a great energy, and so I was originally gonna do this episode off camera, but I really wanna sit here with you and have a conversation and like get to know you, because we got a lot to unpack today. You're from <laughs> Australia. You make wonderful music. I ended up listening to it a couple different times today. Um, my, my writer and my team really enjoyed it. And so we're gonna go through some recent projects that you did, mm -hmm. some inspirational stuff, and then I'm gonna get to know the Australia side of you as well. Are you ready? Is that cool too? <laughs> yeah. I got some questions from, what, from, like, from an animal perspective about what you've seen. So we're gonna go Everybody through does. some of that. <laughs> I, I mean, it's so boring in the States with some of the animals we see, unless you're down in like Florida or the South. So we're gonna, I, wanna, I wanna know the size of some bugs that you've seen and shit like that. So here we go, here we go. So you just dropped Moonlight. Really yeah. enjoyed that track. I, wa I watched through um, videos and, and got to know some of the lyrics a little bit. What was what was it like? I think you found that voice note in your phone, or was or is that something that like you were working on? How how did that come around again? How did that project come back around from when you originally started singing that into your phone? So, like almost a, I say like a week ago. How do you say that? Four years ago, four years and a week ago. Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, four years and a week ago. I'm, I, I think I saw the film Moonlight for the first time. Okay. And it just had a huge impact on me as like a young queer, ple queer person, you know, mm -hmm. people. <laughs> as a young queer person. And I had never seen intimacy like that between two black people, but especially black men. Mm -hmm. And watching... Oh, man, it's such a phenomenal film. Have you seen it? I have not seen it. So it's about this young black boy. Okay. And you just are following. It's a coming of age story. Okay. You're following his life. There's like three really distinct sections, if I'm not mistaken. He's a boy. He's a teenager. Yeah, and yeah. then he's a man. And you see how early we put our expectations onto people especially young black men, young black boys. Of course. And how they manifest in the way that, like I, I was raised to be a man, I'm non-binary. Mm -hmm. Like how we are raised to act, what we're conditioned to take, like what is acceptable behavior, what is not, and like how early certain things, especially queerness, are demonized. Yes. Like it is like, that is the absolute worst thing that you could be. That it puts you in so much danger. But so it follows his story. And of course, he meets this other young boy and they just get along. And it's just like, oh, like this innocent, yeah. beautiful, oh, that's fun. Like, I just like, I just enjoy your it's, company. Yeah, friendship at that point. Yeah. Right? And then there's this moment when he's a teenager and this person's like, I've grown up with you. Like, you're my friend. Like, I've known you forever. It's just a hand touch at the beach. Mm -hmm. This is how I remember it. I haven't seen the film in a while. I should watch it again. And it changes everything. But even that, like, that level of intimacy, I've yeah. never seen before, like, in TV or film. Yeah. All that to say, the movie had a very big impact on me. And so afterwards, I, like, didn't know what else to do. So I picked up my guitar, and I put on my voice notes, and I was just like... I just started, yeah, like singing and playing this, this little idea. And because I'd known about that part of myself for a while, mm -hmm. but I never felt like I had space to really investigate or even just look at it like straight down the line. And so I found myself forced to in this really beautiful way, like I felt cracked open yeah and so i i played my little voice note i had a lot of feelings i cried a bit and I, like even after that even after watching it i still didn't feel ready to share that with anyone like i made it i felt that's a pretty intimate moment to have that in, come from that kind of level of inspiration pretty 100%. powerful and so it was like but it was such a like yeah it was so personal i was like no 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 
Yeah. I'm not ready to They're talk to ready. anyone about this. I'm not ready to like, I'm like, there's so much more of myself that I need to understand mm -hmm. to be able to accept this, to be able to speak to it and to share it in an authentic way. So I just benched it. I was just like, that's just there. I know that's there at some point. I hope that I'll feel ready to kind of like face that. And with my last latest project, Jupiter, coming to terms with being non-binary and trying to capture the infancy of that experience that has been like the last three years of my life. Yeah. Understanding that and reflecting, I feel like I've learned how to hold space in a different way, how to look at myself and learn about myself with, I say, less judgment because <laughs> Yeah, I think it's almost impossible to eradicate all of the things that we've been taught to, you know, view through that specific lens. It's for better or for worse. The perspective is that different is worse, right? The, across a variety of things, right? This change, right? Yeah, it's it's different. Is scary. Like mm -hmm. it's just like fear that, and and yeah, be resistant, mm -hmm. which is I think really funny when I try and boil down life. I love. I've been reading this book. Um, this series by Octavia Butler. Okay. And in it, she says that change is the only constant in life. And so her character says that change is God. Okay. Because it's the only everlasting truth. And I think it's funny that we're constantly like fearing different when different is just like potential of change. Absolutely. That's huge. Those, you know, the, the, the constant of changes is something that the world isn't used to because they build systems that are resistant to change, right? <laughs> <laughs> like they keep they want, building things. They keep building it. things to cause it to stop. <laughs> like stop, get the building from shaking. Earthquakes, right? Okay, like yeah. let's, let's stop Mother Earth shaking everything that it's in its hole on it right now, right? Like come on, man, <laughs> this just doesn't make sense, right? But I think what's interesting here is that um, you know your project, the the music, you know that the era and the time that we live in right now, this is this is something that, not to say people are leaning into, but we are embracing. We're embracing it more as a society. We're embracing more change. We are more acceptable to things. A combination of media, a combination of great, great content and great art uh, and great leaders. I look at artists like you um, as leaders in their own way, of, of somebody that can be relatable to a whole section of populations or of people that maybe they're just not getting the same you know, speaking, like people speaking to them, whether it's quantities or qualities, whether it's the same quality of leaders. I look at people from, you know, we were just talking offline, you know, small towns don't have the best access to, to the best leadership all the time. If it's, there's only so many people, right? And so art and digital things and videos and this message can really translate that moment in that video and that movie can really inspire something that can touch so many other people, right? And that's something that's so powerful. So I wanted to talk a little bit about Jupiter. Um, Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Maybe I could be from Jupiter. That quote. Were you stoned when you said that? No. Not at all. No. I mean, even now when people say that, because it's... Okay. Well, not entirely. <laughs> <laughs> the truth. The truth. When I first thought of Jupiter, um, I was with my best friend. Okay. And we were, I think, at his place. And he knows a lot about the sky. Okay. Very big into, like, he's got the astrology app. He's like, it's like, oh, oh, that's yeah. this. Like, and especially back home, you can see a lot of stars. It's, oh, that's cool. It's stunning. Um, and he said, it's like, oh, I think, I think that's Jupiter behind those clouds or like beyond those clouds. And I was like, whoa, that's <laughs> such a beautiful thing to say. Whoa. So I wrote that down on my phone. And I was like, Jupiter beyond like the clouds, like Jupiter beyond, oh, you yeah, know, like yeah, that yeah. is like, what an image. And I, I have a few, I have like a few things in my phone, like titles where I'm like, that could be something like I, mm -hmm. that, that feels inspiring. That feels like it speaks to a collective of ideas. I was ruminating with that. And at the same time, going through all these experiences and like understanding who I am. And I'm talking to my team about it. And my memory is that um, one of my team members back home I was talking, I really want to, like, I, I need to speak about this. Like, it's taking up so much of my brain space, just like learning about myself, all this shit. 
I just don't know how to like tie in this thread. It can't be too direct. Like I need it to be more than that. I need it to feel mm -hmm. a bit more like magical. And I was talking about like, yeah, I've got like these titles. And all. she's like, she just said that. Like, well, no, that's, yeah, that's. If, if <laughs> men are from Mars, we're like, why aren't you from Jupiter? Like you could just be from Jupiter. I was like. Yeah, that's pretty powerful. To, and of course it came out that way, right? So, yeah. <laughs> just so casual and wonderful. And it, it was just like, <laughs> it was just an idea, but to me it was everything. Like it made everything make sense. It was yeah. this access point to all of these feelings and thoughts that was like literally like out of this world. Like it was a way to like mm -hmm. escape. And I think a lot of like gender queer people, but queer people in general, like find this world suffocating because of these systems that we've created. Yeah, of course. And I feel like I even needed it, like, this place that I was aiming for. Yeah. Because I had so much fear that I would do it wrong because I was only just finding this out. Like, I'm like, what authority do I have to speak about this experience when there are other people that have experienced it on yeah. such a different level and a, and a more lived level? Like, I was just like, my opinions are less than like useless they're like what am i doing <laughs> who am i to, to say these things and have it impact other people and base things on that yeah yeah and i think what i realized over time with conversations with my friends with like learning conversations with myself the impact that other artists have had on me not trying to explain everyone's experience but just explaining their experience mm -hmm. has been so extraordinary like to have, witness over and over again, artists that I love realize themselves and be comfortable to share that with everyone. Yeah. Be like, hey, I have been through an experience. Take from it what you will. I noticed something consistent with how you create mm. hearing these things. You get, you, you have no problem expressing it, but it's when you're ready. It's when collectively the project or how you feel or how it can be, you know, how it could be consumed or, or even be received. I notice an intentionality within that and like a patience with that, that I feel like not all artists have. Um, I feel like that goes into some of the grades. And I, I feel like I've heard that in some of the music. One of the ones that I wanted to touch on is the song Mess Around. Um, <laughs> I wanted, I wanted, cause that's, that's got a, that's got a, you know, that one with Earth Game, that's a big, that's a big artist, right? And so, yeah. and that's a group of artists that they have intentionality with their messaging with everything that they do 100%. and what they release and otherwise they they'll just themselves. yeah and how a hundred percent what they stand for and so what was it like creating mess around and collaborating with an artist at that level and and the intentionality behind being patient with that release i first of all thank you i appreciate that <laughs> i think it's a very like kind thing to like extract from from even just listening to what you have. I I do try to put a lot of intention behind everything that I do. I want to feel comfortable and safe with everything that I put out. I want people to receive it knowing that. The Earth Gang, it's it's funny because I feel like on a first listen that song is just like like he he oops like you know what i mean correct if you just take it for face value but then you listen yeah. to the lyrics yeah and not just the fun part of it and it's a little bit more of the personal things that you've been that you also put in the other songs as well yeah so like that was a cycle of experiences i feel i really i hit this point in my in my life where I was traveling a bit more, coming to LA to write and stuff. The journey. Yeah. The journeying part, the traveling journey. It's like, I'm here for a while, I'm mm -hmm. here for a while, like, hey, what's up, hang out. Yeah, of course. And learning how to do that safely and respectfully, like learning how to casually have romantic entanglements without, like, pain. Mm -hmm. and, and learning ultimately how to communicate effectively as a person and like creating a safe environment for someone to have expectations and be able to like realize that. The song is, is me just understanding that and clocking it and being like, oh, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I didn't even realize that I wanted to mess around. Like I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. that's what I want to do. That's where I'm at right now. That's I need best, to communicate that's the that. the best play for this, for this time right now. Is yeah. This, is, let's call this one. Let's do that. Let me just 
like that's actually what I want. I need to I need to communicate that. Mm-hmm. And then with Earth Gain, so the song was finished. I'd written it um, with Paul Meany. Saw a, a bobcat that day. It was very cool. Never seen a bobcat. Just saw it like slinking away in the mountains. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Stoked. We'll get to that bobcat later when we get to the Australian <laughs> things. <laughs> um, and yeah, song was finished. I was really proud of it. I was excited. It's definitely different. Like sonically, I think for, for what I had made before that. And uh, my a and DW, he just mentioned that, you know, he talked to a few people. He's like, the only thing that people really feel like you know, that could be added to this song as like a feature. Like, is there anyone that you That's think would be cool? cool? And I'm just like, out of, hmm. out of, like, what do you mean? Like, out of, out I was of like, like, out of, like, what, like, who, like, <laughs> what are we, what, what are the limitations on this? <laughs> and then Earth Gang's name got brought up and I was just like, like, it's Earth Gang. Yeah, that's Can pretty, we do that? That's a legendary feature. Literally. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, let's just reach out. And I was like, okay. That's awesome. We reached out. They were so kind and calm and like speaking to patients like they i feel like it's easy to once you reach a certain level be really like quite um conservative with your time mm-hmm. because obviously life gets a lot there's a lot of things demanding of you so i think that makes sense but like the conversation that i had with them talking about what the song means or, like what i wanted like the energy to capture and stuff just like so supportive and so yeah. willing to just converse with me and be like, oh yeah, you're not really feeling that. Like, I mean, that's cool. How about something like this? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, it's dope. Creative music guy. Creative, yeah, yeah. like, yeah, like real people that cared and were just happy yeah. to have this exchange. Oh, this is going to be dope. We get to make something dope with someone. You yeah, know? and I was yeah. just like, I was in my room just on the phone to them, just like, this is, this is really cool. This is really, I'm like trying to keep it cool as well. I was yeah. trying to like, I was like, Oh yeah, what's up? <laughs> did you call Earth Gang? Yeah, 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 I did. Yeah, they were nice. <laughs> it was That's a pity funny. every time I am like they were back home in Australia touring, and I missed them like three days because I flew out early, mm-hmm. come back here, and like we haven't really caught each other yet. But yeah, really, really lovely people. And this is this is some this is some cool stories, you know. Like Earth Earth Gang has inspired a lot. And they've impacted a lot with their messaging. And I think for what, you know. Very considered artists. 100%. And like going back to that word intentional, like, you know, they're at the point where they're, they're just not taking money from whoever's throwing money at them for features. They're trying to really figure out who they want to work with from a, at least that's what it seems like from our side, right? So I was like, hope. I felt very, lo- I felt very for. fortunate. I was like, damn, yeah. this is. Because, yeah, I mean, ideally it's like. Nah, if we don't fuck with it, don't fuck with it. And yeah, then, yeah. Oh, sorry. I don't know. That's right. <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> that's awesome. All right. So, uh, Jupiter. Um, what do you want people to really think about when 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 they when they consume that, when they read about it, when they hear it? What's important to you for them to 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 really try to get the wheels going? I wanted to create a space and an experience where people could just like gently investigate Mm -hmm. themselves like and put across thoughts and experiences that they probably otherwise wouldn't have considered or if you have and you're like whoa whoa, 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 too much like just like a yeah just a, a a little place a cocoon for you to just oh well i hadn't really thought about it like how does that make me feel like what do i think about this you know Mm -hmm. what i mean and if someone doesn't have time to digest, think, internalize these things and mm. evaluate what is the one track they should listen to. I know it's tough, but like if I'm got three minutes in the car and I'm like, oh man, I got to listen to this one real quick, which one's going to be? Okay, so, nah, no, and <laughs> I'll tell you why. <laughs> no, I, it depends. It totally depends. I like, I like, I I like, like it depends. The... The project, I feel like it moves really well. I'm really proud of the energies that it is able to like bounce to. So it depends on your energy. If you're feeling sentimental, if you're feeling reflective, mm-hmm. then you should listen to gold. That makes sense. Yeah, I like that one. If you're feeling bouncy, but not all the way up, 
Like, if you're feeling like, hey, I'm going to just do my thing today. I don't care. I feel like, like I know what this one is, but I'm going to let you finish. I'd say only human. Okay. That's like, you're like I'm just going to do whatever the, I want today. Mm -hmm. Self-censoring. You see that? Okay. <laughs> if you're cruising and you're like dead set on going somewhere, you should listen to Kobe Beef. That was one of my favorites of the day. I found, I think that one accidentally came on two or three times and I didn't change it once. I was like, <laughs> You're like, okay. oh, yeah, we're back. I'm going to listen to this one again. I feel like I didn't, I feel like I didn't like get into that one enough. I like that. I love the chorus because it just soars. Like that feels like a real like, <laughs> and then if you're trying to like, I don't know. I feel like the highest energy is big wigs. And I, I love that song because of the guitar. It's like, just like. I like the different musics. Like there was, like I said earlier, Frank Ocean I, I heard. And then like on the singing, I was like, like the flows of the You're Going Ever was like what I loved about Frank and some of the R&B of today, right? And or the last decade. And then I also heard you go a little bit higher than some of the people of today and get into the more of some of this falsetto singing. Mm. And I didn't. I don't know any part about your production and the, the tuning and the engineering. That's not my world. I don't know anything about production. But I never felt like it was fake sounding. I felt like it was really you singing, which gives me hope on, you know how amazing T-Pain is when he's singing and things like that? Gives me hope that like when I get one day to hear you in person and hear all of these things come to life. Because some of the music I felt was probably not given justice because it was digitally done versus you in real life to some extent. But Huge. again, I don't know what you sound like singing yet, only on the, on, the, on the, you know, in the car when it's turned up, you know? So I'm really interested in that. I'm particularly excited to catch a show. What, uh, what do you have going on in terms of performances and things coming on? Are you going on tour soon? What, what do we got going on in terms of shows and things of that nature? Yeah, I've got some shows coming up. I'm super excited for, um, I've planned on having U.S. shows a few times and I've played L.A. and New York. You but live I here or you live to... over in Australia full time? Uh, I live nowhere. <laughs> so yeah, I live both places. I, yeah, at the moment I'm traveling a lot and I actually mm. literally haven't been anywhere for more than a couple months. That's fair. Um, technically I live here now, but I'm playing LA, San Fran, Sacramento, mm -hmm. New York, Chicago, Toronto, Washington. Dope, cool. That's awesome. I'm from Seattle, so that's awesome. Oh, hell yeah. See if I can send somebody out there for sure. I've got, yeah, a bunch of shows coming up, and it's going to be really cool. And also to answer your question, like, yes, I really sing. And I saw you have, was it a pro project with the uh, Apollo? I am touring with touring, Omar. Touring. Back touring. home in Australia. Yeah, that's yeah, super dope. Which I'm very excited for. I... Yeah, I have a lot of admiration and respect for now, now, now we gotta get into some of those some of these moments real quick before we get you out of here. So Australia and the United States. <laughs> I've heard great things about Australia's nightlife and the party scene, the music scene, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Alright, so Australia's craziest versus United States. Which one are you which one do you think? Which is crazier? Yeah, for the nightlife and the partying and the it's concerts. Which fan base is going US. The US by far? Without, you gotta think. Like People per capita, mm -hmm. the U.S. just huge. has so many more people, and therefore I feel like the capacity to party is stronger. The capacity to party is stronger here. Yeah. Okay, so that's and also you'll have college culture that yeah, doesn't yeah. exist in the same way back home. Okay. Like if you go, like some people move to go to, to like we call it university, but most people just go to a university, like in mm -hmm. their town, and then maybe live nearby, or like move into the city, get an apartment shared with like friends, but like. On campus living is like quite rare, to yeah. my knowledge. I'm like, that's not. Yeah, a they kind of require it at the universities here. Yeah, so I had to do it. Which is, well, like so. They far. say that the data supports your 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 grades at that point. That's what they say. Wild. I don't they know. They want to keep I'm, you. They want to keep you in money for debt. That's what yeah. I'm like, America. parties look pretty crazy. That's what I know. Fifty thousand a quarter. Let's go. Um, okay, so uh, Aust I don't know anything about Australia, so I want to get into some like music and and like. So a little bit of what's the slang out there? What are some words that people describe? Like, like we for weed, right? We say, "Oh, that weed's fire," or "Yeah, that weed's dank." What are some words that they use to describe like weed or good music or the shit slaps? 
Oh, what do we yeah. say? What are some What are some of those phrases that that Australians say? I feel like usually people are just saying it's a banger, but it sounds banger. funny because we're just saying banger. Like it just sounds. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's not a banger. There's no R in there. It's just A's. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of A's in there. Yeah, the that's banger. Um, and then I'm like weed. The only thing that I'm can think of is that, like, they what, smoke spliffs out there. or They smoke real weed. Both. Spl- both. Everyone smokes everything. Oh. A lot of stuff is mixed with ciggies. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it's legal out there now, though. No. Oh, yeah, it's medical. Medical is legal. Yeah, they can import, export. But regular. No, yeah, you can't just no, go. No, you can't just go out. Like, you've got to yeah, have. Yeah. But it's it's so close. And I just don't understand what's holding us back. Like, it is such an economic. Those, those systems we were talking about. Yeah, it's so been one way for a long time. It's so dumb. Yeah. It's whatever. It's fine. Well, this is an exciting time. I mean, you got. I to... think we call the end of a, a joint. A stinging Roger. A stinging Roger? <laughs> yes. What is this? Okay, we gotta look this up. I'm putting me on game. Yeah, it's like, hey, oh, this the is the last hit. Like, ah, this is a stinging, stinging Roger. Roger. What's a stinging Roger? I don't know. It's the only time I've heard it's it. It's like a bug or a bee or something? <laughs> no, that's it. That's <laughs> the only time you've heard it. That's crazy. Yeah. All right, was there anything else you want people to know uh, about the project, about what you got coming up? Is there anything specific that you want people to, to just... I want everyone love, feel when they when they come across you. Yeah, like I want people to know that they can be whoever they are all the time. And if they can't, then they can well listen to my music. While they're listening to music, safe space no matter what. Yeah, hundred percent. That's awesome. Be you. That's huge. Well, I appreciate you being and hanging out. I feel like we had a good conversation. Yeah, so it's lovely you. to meet you. Thank lovely you so much for having me. Well. Of course, thank you. All right, you guys, JP here checking in Respect My Region. We're here at Warner Records, downtown LA, Forest, Claude in the building. Make sure you guys go like, follow, subscribe, the music, tap in with the message, and of course, go support in person at a show. We'll see you guys next time. We much out. Much love. Peace. <laughs>